Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray and I teach watercolor. We do a new tutorial every week and this week we are doing Mountain Pathway. Oh. We have Keenan here working the cameras. Hello. I'm super excited to show you guys how to paint this. Some of you have been asking for landscapes, backgrounds, and how to paint mist all in one. Oh snap. Okay, so we're gonna do this project in six steps. Perfect. So our very first step is we are going to put in the mist slash sky. Okay, our second step, we will be putting in our background and our mid-ground. Our third step, third, third step is we'll be putting in our foreground mountain. Our fourth step, we'll be putting in our pathway. Our fifth step, we'll put in our little sapling tree with some grass. Mm -hmm. And very last step, any finishing details. I'm excited for this one. It's gonna be good. We are using four paintbrushes for this project and that's just because I wanna show you guys how easy some parts can be with larger paintbrushes. Oh. So we have big and small. So I have a round two, a round six, which is our go-to brushes, and then a round 12 and a wash one. If you guys have been with us for a while, you'll notice that I'm using these two a lot more. I'm just trying to give you guys more information. Nice. That's it, trying to help you out. Super helpful. We will be doing this project using three colors. So our very first color is azure blue. Our second color is deep yellow. And our third color is red. So you're gonna see here, we don't have green. <laughs> we'll be doing a lot of mixing. Fun. Yeah, which is Because I noticed that the majority of the painting was green and brown. It is. That's shocking when I see blue. We're just using primary colors and we're gonna mix them. Yes, this is the best. It's gonna be great. Okay, we're gonna do our outline and then our oath and then we'll get into it, okay? So I taped my paper down. We are using Let's Make Art watercolor paper. It is a wood pulp or cellulose paper, which means it's not 100% cotton. But I really like these types of papers like this or Canton XL when you're working with liquid watercolors and also to play. Like it took me literal years to feel comfortable painting on arches just because it's so expensive. Um. Now arches is wonderful. It's a really fabulous paper and I love it, but I was so intimidated by the price that um, like I wouldn't paint on it. Cause I'm like this one sheet costs like $2, <laughs> you know, yeah. like it really scared me, but. That's like a Whopper Wednesday deal. Yep. <laughs> Burger King Whopper Wednesday? I don't. Oh no. <laughs> I don't know. It's okay, Never mind. So what, what I'm just trying to say is use whatever supplies will actually make you create. Like that's all, I don't care what you actually use. Like if you feel better using like a, a less expensive paper and that feels good to you and that will actually make you paint because you're not scared, use that. If you wanna use like Arches nice paper because with like pigment paints and things like that, it's a better experience. That paper holds water better, then use that. Like just make is all I'm saying. Yeah. I don't care what you use. Comfortable with cardboard, just use that. Paint on cardboard, paint on wood, paint on yourself. Like let's. <gasps> yes. <laughs> Not with these paints though, because they stay they do stain. your skin. I had blue and green for days. It washes out of your clothes, but not so much your hands. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have my outline here and I'm going to tape it to my paper. I'm using Holbein Soft Tape, it's my favorite tape. And um, remember, outlines are just guides for you. Here, tape it. And then you're gonna take your graphite paper can you get me a pencil? Yes, I can. And you're gonna do graphite paper, dark, shiny side down. Okay, now reuse your graphite paper um, because when graphite paper is brand new, it's super sensitive and strong. And the more you use graphite paper, the easier it is for it to like soften. And so you can get lighter lines, which is kind of our goal. We don't want the lines to be too dark because watercolor is transparent and you'll um, see through it. So reuse your graphite paper until literally it doesn't work anymore. That's how you know you should get new graphite paper. Okay, so I am just gonna follow. I always like to do a test line and then kind of lift up and see. That actually is a good um, pressure. Now when you do your test line and you lift up, if it's too light, and you can't see it, then you know you need to press harder. If it is way too dark, 
just uh, lighten your pressure when you're pushing down. There's also many other ways that you can transfer outlines. You can use a light box, you can use a window. By many other ways, there's one. <laughs> <laughs> a light box. <laughs> okay. How's it keep going? Keep going. I don't have anything else. That's it. That's all I got. Another tip when you're using your outlines is to use a marker, like a felt tip marker, so then you can see where you've already outlined. Uh, it also has a softer tip, so the it, the line isn't as dark. And with all outlines, don't don't look at this like a coloring page. Look at this as a rough sketch. I provide outlines sometimes because, I mean, drawing is a skill that takes time and I don't want that to stop you from finding the joys of painting. So we'll provide outlines for more like difficult or um, tight projects. Um, but like, this isn't the end all be all. You can go off of this. Like you don't have to follow this exactly. Okay. Okay. If you can raise your right hand. And repeat after me, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Thank you. Okay, now, right before we get into painting, I'm just gonna talk a little bit more before we start painting, but I wanted to give you some background about this project. Some of you guys have been asking how I decide which backgrounds, to, I mean, which projects to paint and my process. So I decided it might be fun to share that a little bit as cool. I teach the tutorials to give you some information. So. The theme for this month is maintaining balance. And when I think about balance in my life, I think about like balance can mean trying to like juggle all of these things and finding equilibrium. It can also mean um, being solid. And I was thinking about this one experience that I had with a, a professional mentor of mine. And he told me this story that I'm going to tell you now. I don't know if it's a story. It's a, more of an exercise. So <clears throat> last year, it was like crazy at work. It was just hard. There were a lot of things going on and I was feeling very overwhelmed and very stressed. And I just like didn't know how I could be a support to the people that I worked with and keep doing what I was doing without feeling like it just felt heavy. You know, I mean, everybody experiences that in their life where things just feel heavy. Things feel like they're going to fall apart. Things feel hard. And, um, I was explained to him that this is how I felt. And I didn't know how to like not only move past it, but be a cheerleader for those that I work with also. And so he had me do this exercise that I'm going to do with you. And it's a little bit you know, it's fine though. We trust each other. We're good. We're friends. <laughs> so we were in a Zoom call and he was just like, okay, I'm going to have you close your eyes. And I did. And do you know how awkward it is to close your eyes on a Zoom call? Super awkward. But I did it. Okay. Okay. I'm not going to do it now, but he said, close your eyes. And he was just like, right now it feels like you're in a storm. He was like, and that storm is real. You feel it. Like things are moving. You feel like it's going to fall apart. Like it's crazy. It's crazy. And it's real. I don't want to pretend like it's not real. That storm is real and your feelings are valid and they're real. I might mess this up, but this is the best that I can remember. And he was just like, so you're in the storm. And I just want you to picture yourself taking a step outside of that storm. Just step right outside of it. He was just like, that storm is right there still. You can touch it. You can still feel it. But you're one step out. And he was just like, and then there's a mountain right next to this storm. And he was just like, and this mountain is right next to it. You see the storm. You see this mountain. He was just like, go to that mountain. So I'm like, okay. And in my mind, I go to this mountain. And he was just like, and from this mountain, you're looking at this storm. 
and it's still there and it's still real. And he was just like, but what if you are the mountain and these experiences that you're having are real, but they're not always. And this mountain that you are, how solid you are, your attitude, your goals, your values, he's like, that is solid. That is what stays. And you're going to see this storm and you're going to feel this storm, but the storm is going to go. And he was just like, and another storm will come. It's inevitable. We all experience this challenge, like challenges. They're constant. I mean, once you solve a problem, it's essentially creating another one. <laughs> like it just always goes. That's life. And that's okay. And he was just like, but as you're feeling this storm, I want you to realize that you're actually the mountain looking at this storm. And the best thing that you can do is be solid in yourself while you are weathering this storm that's still very real, but it won't last forever. And then like, I was just like, okay. Like, I feel like I can breathe. I feel like I can breathe again. And I was just like, do I, am I supposed to do that exercise with everyone I encounter? Like, how do I, how do I communicate that, you know? And he was just like, he was just like, think about how you feel now and your attitude, your energy that you're experiencing. Bring that solid energy of just constant, of light and love, wherever you go and whoever you interact with. And that's how you can help them. Do not be this twirling, anxious, you know, like, because that was me. I felt, like I, I felt like I was out of control. I felt like I was a hurricane. He was just like, don't bring that energy. Don't bring the storm energy to these conversations and these interactions. Bring mountain energy. So when I thought about balance and I thought about the ups and downs of life and trying to do it all and just like being mindful, being intentional, I thought about that experience that I had with my mentor. I thought about um, how that made me feel. And so I thought that this would be a wonderful project in line with our theme where we're going to learn a bunch of watercolor techniques, but simultaneously we can think about who we are and if we can be a storm or a mountain. I want to be a mountain. 100%. I'm not always a mountain. Sometimes I'm a storm. <laughs> Keenan's like, you are not always a mountain. I didn't say anything. <laughs> so, okay, now let's get started. So I'm going to use my one inch brush because we're going to do our uh, background first. And the mist. It's like the mist in the sky. They're kind of one. And I'm going to make a desaturated blue. So. I'm gonna take my one inch wash. I'm gonna grab a little bit of blue. Now, these liquid watercolors are super, super vibrant, which is really fun. But when we wanna do more um, like realistic paintings, we gotta really tone down these colors. And how you tone down colors is you add its complements to them. So the complement of blue is orange. So I'm gonna grab a little yellow and a little red. And I'm gonna mix that together. And this is reading too green for me. So I'm gonna take a little bit more red and mix that in there. Okay, how's that feeling? Oh, that feels like a reddish brown now, kind of more brown. And I want this mist to feel gray slash blue. So I'm gonna add a little bit more blue. And maybe a little bit more blue. Now, mm. That's feeling good. That feels like a gray blue. And that's so fun to watch the change. Isn't it? Yes, when you're mixing colors, it's like, oh my goodness, yeah. piece by piece. Yeah, just a little bit. And remember, you can always adjust it. And like, let's say you add too much of one color and you just start getting like too much, too much. Remember that you can always start a new mixing pile. Like I could take this gray and move it over here and then mix on this instead of this huge thing. You mm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So sometimes if you need to like rein it back in and control the amount a little bit more, you can do that. So that's what I did, because I want to add a little bit more blue. That feels good, and you can test it. Oh, that's a good color. That is oh, mist. Yeah. That's that is just nice. like, yeah, that's good. Okay. So I'm going to use this color, and I'm going to do paint essentially to like 
the top two thirds of my painting. And I'm just gonna paint over the mountains, okay? So I'm gonna get my brush wet, hit it off the side of the cup so it's not dripping, pick up that color that we just mixed, and just go back and forth, work my way down. What a good color. Isn't that good? If it's not spreading as nicely as you want it to, grab a little bit more water. And then I'm just adding, slowly I'm adding a little bit more and more water as I work my way down because if there is going to be like a darker value, I want it to stay at the top and I want it to kind of lighten up as I go down. And again, I'm just painting over my mountains. Not a big deal. And you can do the pathway too. Because we're working in such a light value here that um, we're going to cover it anyway. I got fuzz on my brush. I mean, on my paper. Great. Can I get it out? Okay. Well, now I got to redo the top. Good save. No, it's bad. That wash does work. It does, right? So quick. We just put our sky in, in like 10 seconds. Boom, bam. Amazing. Okay. Great. Now we're going to move on to doing the background mountain and this kind of like background mountain here. So it's almost like this section and this section with this foliage is one continuous and this is a separate one. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna use my 12 or you can use your six. And using that same color, this gray color, I'm gonna make it slightly more green or you can use the very same color that you've already mixed. It's up to you, but I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow and blue to it to just make it a tiny, tiny bit more green. Just a, just a little, just a little. Just barely. Just barely. And I'm gonna put this background mountain in, but I want a barely there color. So I put some color down and then I rinsed my brush and I'm actually lifting up some of the color that I put down because it was too dark. Okay, I feel good. Like you want it to barely stand out from your sky. So if you put color down and it's just not as light as you want, you can lift, okay? Now, I wanna point out that I try to make my outlines darker when I'm teaching, so you can actually see them, but on your own painting, try and make your outlines as light, as light as humanly possible, okay? So like, if I was painting this without teaching, I would've gone way lighter, so then you wouldn't have seen that edge. Mm. It's not a big deal if you see that edge, it's not the end of the world, even my like, original fine art paintings that I sell, I leave pencil marks. Like pencil marks are not a sign of something being unprofessional. That just adds to the originality of your painting. It's part of the process. But remember it's a piece of paper. If you don't like that, you can see the pencil lines. Do it again and just sketch a little bit lighter, okay? Okay. So put in that and now I'm gonna do my next mountain. Now at this point, my paper is damp, but it is not so wet that when I put the paint in, it goes everywhere. You know what I'm saying? So your paper doesn't have to be totally dry, but we don't want it to be so wet that we're not controlling the brush strokes that we're putting down. So if you're putting down color and it's going across your sky, lift that up, smooth it out, let it dry a little bit more, and then put those colors in, okay? The nice thing about working on like a damp ground like this is that it kind of softens whatever you're putting down it blends mm. which actually works out perfectly for our like misty for like pathway mountain it just because things that are far away in the atmosphere aren't as sharp and especially if you're throwing fog in there like it definitely has these moments of like softness lightness, like light values. So allow there to be light values. And I'm just gonna put in this foliage. If you wanna mix like a little bit more green, you can. 
And these ones, especially the foliage, like bushes or trees where you're just like, I'm not, I know that that's living plant life, but I don't know what it is. That's okay. It's really good to paint those on a damp surface because again, it softens it. It lightens it. It makes it push back in the distance. We don't want these marks to be dark or too sharp, okay? So let them bleed, let them move, let them be a little bit organic, like let them be. Now on the bottom section right here, I'm gonna do just a slightly darker value, another layer to show that it's kind of like going in. You know what I mean? Like this mountain's going down and then another one comes up. Yes. So we're communicating that that's going down in by putting a darker value there. Cool. The fog makes me feel a little mysterious. Yeah. Just like, what? What's happening over there? What's beyond the path? Well, let's find the path and see, you know? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. So we did step one, two, and three. No, nope. one and two. No, nope. no, nope. one and half a two. Now we're <laughs> going to do the other half a two. <laughs> we're going to do our mid ground right now. So this one, I want to be a little bit, um, I'm going to be using that same color. And if you want to leave like a thin white line in between these while that dries, you can like so. And then on the right hand side, I'm going to be painting slightly darker color, mm, slightly more paint that I'm picking up. So it's a darker value. Maybe that's a better way to describe it mm -hmm. like this. Okay. Now that's actually kind of the same. So I'm going to grab more paint. I'm going to put this here. A little bit greener because I want to bring up the saturation a little bit as I come closer to my foreground. And I'm still using my 12, but we are working in a small area. So if it's easier for you to use your six, use your six. Okay. I think I'd like to say that I'd like to hike. But I think I like the idea of camping and just eating food without walking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think, because yeah. it would be fun to go to this path. It would. But how, how far away is it? <laughs> how much walking how, is actually involved? How many involved? steps are we counting? Okay, so you can see I made this little chunk right here a little bit darker in value. And sometimes it's fun, like, if you're feeling, you know, a little bit edgy and playful to, like, while it's wet, just to, like, drop in colors right where it meets that path. Mm and just let those like bleed out and just like don't mess with them too much. Just kind of let them do their own thing. You can do that on both sides. Kind of look like overgrown stuff. Yeah, where That's it's just neat. like, let's just put a little bit of value variation in that section, not a ton. We don't want to like go crazy here, but you know. Okay. Now, as we're moving closer in this section, so if you're looking at our reference photo, we're here. This needs to be a darker value because now this mountain is coming out of the fog towards us. So it's going to be more colorful and it's going to be darker. So I'm going to take my blue and I'm still just using this gray mixture that I already have on this palette. It's already a neutral, might as well keep using it. Let's add some more color to it. Now, always when I'm mixing these greens, I'm going to be adding a little bit of red to it just to desaturate those greens so it's not like highlighter green. So I mixed a good green. I'm going to grab just a little bit of red. And that red, adding that to that green is going to make it like a brown green, which is good. That's what I want. Okay. So now I have this stronger green. It's a darker value. And I'm just going to work it back and forth in this middle section here. And I'm going to meet that line. Now, when I meet this line, this strong line right here, I'm going to switch to my six. And I'm going to kind of work that line back and forth and kind of blend it. Even though, like, 
I want the transition between those sections to be a little bit smooth. Like I don't want it to be like hard line, hard line, you know? So I'm just gonna kind of use this six with taking this color that I just laid down, kind of work it into the lighter valued area. So it transitions and blends a little bit smoother. You see that? Yes. So it feels like more natural, like that fog is... Um, Moving. No, Flo that's not the word. Disappearing. I don't know. It'll come to me. It's okay. okay. I'm not worried about it. And then that same thing right here along this line where I have this line of my outline, I'm going to do a little bit darker green because I'm trying to communicate. It's almost like we're saying this mountain is bumpy. Okay. It's going up and it's going down. It's going up. That's what these lines are. They're not perfectly smooth, like a straight thing. So using your different values will communicate the shape of that mountain. good it really is <laughs> okay now I'm gonna move to my 12 go back to my 12 and I'm gonna move on to now we're on step three this is our okay. foreground of the mountain so this is where I want my color to be vibrant this is where I want my color to be dark okay oh mm -hmm. I just realized something when I say mm, Okay, when you put in your foreground right here, we want to use a dark value because it's closest to us, but we also want to allow for the range because atmospheric perspective works like this. The things that are closest to you have the highest contrast. You see the darkest shadows and the lightest lights. And then as it moves backwards, not only does it lighten in value, it evens in value, okay? Because it moves further away from us. So when I say, get your darkest darks. We want the darkest darks, but you also wanna leave room for some light. That's why if you see here, I have some highlights a little bit in my pathway. I use yellow, just straight yellow to get some lighter values in there because I wanted there to be a range. So don't, when I say like, make sure your foreground is your darkest value, don't use like just black because that's not an accurate way. I mean, allow there to be a full range of values in your foreground, okay? That was a great, I like that. Yeah? The contrast really clicked for me. It needs to be, yes. You want to make sure you got highlights and low lights for the most part. And then when things go further away, and go outside and look at this. Like when you're driving, take a look at this. Because not only that mountain in the distance, it's going to be a lighter value, but you're not really going to be able to see shadows and highlights. It evens in value. Lightens and evens, okay? So I have a dark green here. I mixed all three of my colors till I got a green that I was happy with. I'm also gonna make sure I have plenty of yellow <laughs> on my um, palette because I'm gonna be dropping just yellow in too. When I do this foreground, I'm gonna be doing wet on wet techniques and working quickly. I don't want you to be too precise or perfect when it comes to this. We're dropping in color and we're letting it move and we're okay with it. We're allowing okay. watercolor to do its thing. Okay. So. I'm gonna just use a damp brush. I have a little bit of color left on my brush and that's okay. So I'm basically putting down mostly just like a wet area. And when it's nice and wet like this, I'm gonna take my green and just do brush strokes. Angled, the same angle as this mountain, okay? So they're kind of at a, what is that, 45? Yes. I'm gonna drop in some yellow when it's nice and wet like this. And again, long sweeping brush strokes. I feel like I need a little bit darker green, so I'm gonna mix that. Drop that in too, ooh, yeah. And see, it's just gonna move on its own. It's gonna bleed on its own. I'm gonna let it. I'm you don't not... know what's growing on that mountainside. Yeah, like you're gonna get a bunch of different colors of grass, maybe there's like moss, maybe there's dirt, I don't know. Cool. Let's drop some yellow in here. Man, I really love how that green turned out. Me too. And I'm kind of just gonna kind of connect where it meets our mid ground a little bit. There, okay. And then if you wanna use that same thing that we did previously where we kind of like 
use our six and work, kind of like blend this out, work that line where they meet a little bit so it softens, so it feels like a smooth transition. There we go. That feels better. Gosh, I love this yellow. I love yeah, what that, that does. Yellow, initially I thought it was mostly green, but then as it's been blending in, it's mm -hmm. really yellow. I love that. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing on this right hand side. Now, we have our little sapling tree here. We do paint our tree. If you look at my reference photo, I kind of just outline it. But if you want to try and avoid the trunk, you can. It just gets a little bit tricky. So I just painted it and then gave the suggestion of the tree. But if you want it to feel like it really pops out, don't paint the trunk area, paint around it. I definitely thought it was just a tree rather than the suggestion of a tree. Right, you didn't like it, look I didn't, too. I didn't like look super into the detail of it. Yeah, if you look closely at that trunk, the color of the trunk is actually just the ground. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't, it, it's just, it's the same. Wow. And then I just kind of outlined a tree. <laughs> Magic. Okay. So let's keep going. I'm gonna get some more yellow. And we're just going to, using the 12, put in this color, the greens. I'm gonna work from the back. Let's brighten that up. A little bit brighter green, there we go. So I'm just using water and spreading that water and that color out. And then while it's wet, I'm gonna be dropping in yellow. Like maybe a really blue green where you have like let me show you. Blue. Blue sections. Ooh. Here's some darker green, warmer green. Like really play with the variations of greens that you can get and just let it be. Let's just see how they interact. It's just a piece of paper. So the worst thing that can happen is like it doesn't turn out and nobody knows. <laughs> You're like throw it away <laughs> and you can start again. <laughs> Nobody's got to know. Yellow. How will they know? How will they know? They won't. How, 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 they, how they, no one's gonna know. No one's gonna know. But you'll know. Sometimes that's the hard part. It's just like, but I know. <laughs> I know in that trash can there's a bad painting. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, again, I've said this before too, and you're champion at saying it, obviously. <laughs> but. It's one, actually my quote. <laughs> yeah, I think it's probably you said it first. <laughs> but you know, Michael Scott, so. Yeah. Uh, the first painting I tried ever was one of the mountain ones, and mm -hmm. it turns out that's one of the more difficult ones for me because there's no outline. Mm -hmm. And when I left and came back the next day, I asked, whose painting is that? Because that looks pretty good. Yep. So if you think you're having a rough time, just leave it alone. Let it dry for a couple Come hours. Come back to it before you yeah. decide on it. That's a great point, Keenan. Thank you. And I want to point something out here. So I'm putting in my wet on wet. I'm getting some different colors, values, textures. I'm getting some blooms. I'm celebrating the blooms. I'm okay with the blooms. But one thing that I do want to do on this right hand side up here is I kind of just want to soften that edge just a little bit. So I'm taking a clean brush, my round six, and I'm just lifting a little bit of color out, just a little bit. And you can do the same thing with your tree trunk. You know how I said like, paint around it if you want it to be white or just paint through it and you can suggest it. The other thing that you can do is while it's wet, lift the color out while it's wet like this. Oh, wow. What the heck? Yeah. And then just leave it and we'll go back to that later. But you can just lift the that sections out. That could even out. be a white tree. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm gonna add some, a little bit of darkness. So I'm like that nice dark green. Well, that's brown. Whoa. My palettes always just turn into a muddy mess at the end because I just like go for it. Sorry if that is frustrating to you all. <laughs> and I'm just gonna drop in some darker color along the edge here and along where it kind of meets this pathway. And again, my painting is wet. So there, it's not staying sharp. 
it is just blending out and I'm okay with that. That's what I want it to do. And then after it dries, we'll go back in and do some sharp grass lines, some like more details. But for right now, I want it to be wet. I want to just drop in the yellow. Because look how interesting that grass texture is. I know, it's totally different from a minute ago. Yes. And it, you didn't, <laughs> you didn't even do anything. <laughs> much <laughs> okay it's like i'm not entirely convinced i can read i just think i've memorized a lot of words and that's how i feel you're treating this painting <laughs> thing <laughs> uh, yeah look at that i'm so in love with that yellow bloom right there yeah that's great okay so we're gonna leave that alone for a second. We're gonna let that dry, and even as, it's dr as it dries, it's gonna change more. If you're new to watercolor, just so you know, watercolor is always darker while it's wet, and it usually always dries a lighter value. That's normal, you're not doing anything wrong. That's the way watercolor works. We're gonna move on to step four. We're gonna do our pathway. So all of the brown that's on your palette, we're gonna use it because our pathway is brown. Perfect. So I have this kind of like really brownish green right here. Now it's too green for my pathway. I want it to be very clear. This is grass, this is path. So I'm really switching up the hues. But this is your painting. So if you're just like, you know what? I like a green brown. I'm gonna stay with it. Go for it. It just might not be as clear, but maybe you're like, I did that on purpose. I want the pathway to be overgrown with grass and maybe it's worn down and maybe, you know? Yes, Keenan. I heard myself with my question. Oh. But what if Yeah. you used your original mist gray for the path as an option too? Yes. And add some brown in there. Yes, you like, absolutely can. Because it would almost be like gravel. Okay, I want to call something out that I just noticed. So I went back into the top and dropped in color. You see how it's creating blooms yes. because I dropped in water? When you see that happen and you don't want blooms there to catch it, I just take my six and while it's still kind of wet before it sets, I work it out. Wow. There. So you still get a little bit of unevenness, but it's not like the that same organic. And you can do it like, I'm, I'm actually not gonna touch that because I think it's so cool. But know that that's always an option. If you're noticing that blooms are starting to appear and you really, really don't want that hard edge there, while it's still wet, just blend it out with a, with a paintbrush. Okay, I have my 12. I got this green brown, but I want my brown to be really warm. I'm gonna mix more red into that green and more yellow because brown is essentially dark orange. So you wanna start with orange and then like darken it with a little bit of blue and see where that takes you. This is a great brown. That is. So this is a great, like, you see how I have these hints of like red brown in there? Mm -hmm. So that, we're gonna start with that. So I'm taking this, I'm gonna add a little bit of water to it because I want it to be a lighter value. And I'm gonna do horizontal brush strokes because my mountain is angled, my pathway is flat. Horizontal brush strokes. And then as I move back in space, the same is gonna be true for a pathway as it is the mountains. Our values get lighter and even out, okay? Now when this brown touches the green, you're gonna get some blooms, you're gonna get some color mixtures, you're gonna get some different things, we're okay with that. I added a little bit of yellow to this red mixture Remember, horizontal brush strokes. If you want to use your six, I'm going to switch to my six as I get to the back because it's a much smaller area. And you can even just take the color that you've already laid down and use that. Or use what's on your palette and add a little bit of white to it. I mean, like, especially as we move back here, I'm just doing one layer, just one little to show 
that there is a hint of a pathway, but again, I'm not going into too much detail here. It's far away. There's not going to be a contrast in values and it's going to be a lighter value than my foreground. And as you can see, like your pathway, if you were to do your own painting, your pathway gets smaller and skinnier as it goes out. So if you were even doing a flat one, it's going to start wide because you're standing there. This is its biggest it's going to be. And as it goes out, it gets smaller. How quickly it gets smaller, like how tight that angle gets, um, will communicate to your viewer how long it goes. Does that make sense? Yep. So if this pathway stayed mostly this and maybe went to like here, that's communicating to our viewer, this is a short distance. If we're going all the way to like a tiny little dot spec at the end, and that angle is a little bit more extreme, then that's communicating to our viewer, this is a long distance that we are painting. Mm. Okay, so take that information, put it in your back pocket, use it for your own painting. All right, so I got my light values in on my path. Now I wanna go in and put in my dark values. So I'm gonna mix a darker brown, some red, some yellow, cause we want it to be brown, some more blue. Let's just like see what colors we get. Okay, so this is reading really more gray. Maybe a little too much gray, like black. I want to warm it up. So I'm gonna do a little bit more red and a little bit more yellow, just into that same mixture. There we go. Mm. Now it's a dark brown. And you can use your six or your 12. And again, brush strokes. And I'm allowing there to be, I'm not picking up too much water because I want some rough textures. I want some unevenness. So I'm just kind of picking up color. Like that. <laughs> that looks super cool. And I feel like we could go even darker in the front. So I'm just gonna do a little bit more color. Kind of just dropping into what I've already put down. Notice I'm not doing just like bold, smooth, like evenness. I want there to be unevenness. So I'm kind of just dropping it in. Okay. That feels pretty good. Now I want this kind of texture to continue through it. So I'm just going to keep it going. You can use your 12. I'm using my 12 just because it's going to be faster. And I'm kind of just like working this back and forth, putting in a little bit more color, putting in a little bit more value. But remember, we don't want what's back here to be darker than what's up here. Now let's say I just did that brush stroke up here and I felt like that was too dark. I'm just gonna lift. That feels better. Okay. And remember like, um, when you're creating, you have the opportunity to go wild with things that maybe you wouldn't see in nature. So maybe you're just like, okay, cool. That's a path, whatever. But if you're just like, I love the idea of having like straight orange in my path. Mm put straight orange in, you know, like maybe, maybe these colors are not necessarily what you would see, but also maybe they are. And this is your world. You can make this more extreme than what we would see in real life. Which is the beauty of painting. Which is the beauty of creating. Yeah. So I want to show you guys, yeah, you can mix and you can tone and you can desaturate to get more realistic colors. Also, give yourself permission to make this world as vibrant as you want to make it. This is your path. Ooh, good double meaning. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and now what I'm gonna start doing is like where this dirt meets the grass, I'm gonna introduce 
a really dark brown along that edge because I kind of want to separate them a little bit more. So it's just like, here's grass and then it goes in dirt, oh, okay? Okay. So I'm taking like essentially this black mixture that just puddled up, happened to puddle up on my <laughs> palette. All these colors accidentally made a perfect black. Yeah, <laughs> it's great. And I, when you do this line, make it really uneven. Think about grass overgrowing along a path and how there's like, there's it, it goes in and it goes back out, you know, like variation. And then as you work your way up, you're gonna lighten that brown. So we want it to still be like a little bit darker, but remember, not as dark as what's up here. This foreground is gonna be the darkest, okay? I am so in love with my path right now. Can I just take a second and like look at these highlights that's happening right here? Doesn't that seem like maybe it's a little bit of water? Yeah, it, you looked, know? <laughs> it looked like when you put that orange in, that was my favorite part. Yeah. But then that it really, looked a little bit wet. I feel like it brought it to life. It did. So you see how like in the foreground, we want our highlights and we want our shadows. Mm -hmm. We want that contrast, okay? All right. We're gonna leave the path, we're gonna leave the path for a second. Mm. We're gonna go off path. Okay, I'm gonna go back into my mountain. At this point, it should be pretty dry that if we do brush marks, they for the most part stay sharp, okay? So I'm gonna go in and do some green, like dark green, very dark green. Need more yellow. Texture lines, detail lines on my mountain. Okay. You can use, I'm going to use a 12 for some of this. So right here, like where this grass is meeting the path. See, I'm just doing like thin strokes that are the same angle. So, okay. And then like up at the top, just a little bit of boop, boop, boop. And if you wanna to switch to your two, if you have trouble getting thin lines with your 12, you can switch to your two. And maybe a little bit like unevenness. I'm just trying to communicate the movement and the angle of this mountain, okay? And do different variations within our grass. You can use some of that dry brush texture if you want, like technique in the foreground right here. I love the dry brush technique. Isn't it? It's just good. Yeah, that feels good. Maybe a little right here, okay? And I'm gonna do a little bit on this right-hand side. Now I got, a, I got some growth on my right-hand side. Doesn't it kind of look like bushes or like moss or I something? I think because it just kept growing. Yes. So you can do two things. You can leave it and just be like, that's cool. I'm really happy with that. Or you can just like finesse it just a little bit. So like in some of these areas, I'm gonna work back and forth and soften up some of those bloom lines just a little using my 12. Because I really like how um, it's reading as an angle and I don't want it to read flat. So I'm just kind of going in and adding some of those angled brush strokes to be like, yes, we got a lot of growth. We got a lot of interesting stuff going on here, but it's still up the side of a mountain. If this was just a really neat, tall hill, I'd climb it. Yeah. But if it's a mountain. <laughs> and then I'm just going to lift up a little bit more color back here. I love that that tree is there as though it's almost just floating. Yeah. But it's there. It's there. So cool. And then along here, like in this mid-ground, I'm just gonna kind of tighten up that pathway. Remember, it's gonna get skinnier as it goes out, and I'm just gonna do some like uneven lines, like as if there's growth. I just don't want it to be too clean and precise. 
So I'm kind of just messing it up. There we go. Okay. Now at the bottom of this tree, I want there to be like where this tree meets the ground. I want there to be a little bit of dark where it's just like we're grounding that tree. There's a little bit of grass maybe. Okay. Now we're gonna do our actual tree. I'm gonna take my two and I'm gonna mix a really, really dark brown or just a dark value. I still have a lot of brown. Well, I guess it's more like a muddy green right now. I'm gonna use that. So I have this, I'm gonna warm it up using red, yellow, some more green, and a little bit of blue. There we go, now we got a dark brown. And using my two, I wanna make sure it's dry because I want these lines to stay sharp. I'm gonna do my little trunk and the other side too. Now, if your lines skip, don't stress, that's okay. And start doing the branches. Now remember with branches, they get thinner as they go out. So start with like thicker where it meets the trunk and then as it goes out, they lighten. Maybe they skip a little bit. Let's add some warmth to our trunk since it's so light from when I lifted up color. So I'm gonna just add some of this like gold color that I have here on my palette. Okay. Now, if you look at this sapling, you'll see that I have like little hints of um, leaves. So it's not a full tree. This is just starting out. So to do that, I'm gonna take my two and I'm gonna grab light green. So over here on my palette where like, I haven't really touched this area and it's barely a little bit of paint, I'm gonna pick up that color and make sure this is very, very light in value. And I'm just gonna be doing that green sections around the top of the tree, not the whole thing. We're not doing like this umbrella of leaves. This is how we communicate that they're starting to be leaves, but they're on the back side of the tree. They're not right in front of us. They're a hint. They're barely there. Like, so we're going lighter and smaller with our brush strokes, okay? And then after that dries, we'll do darker brush strokes, darker leaves in the front. And that's how we'll be able to communicate the three-dimensionality of that tree, okay? But we gotta let that dry. So while we're letting that dry, let's put in our, let's put in some grass. Oh yeah. So just get, I mean, where we're at right now with this pathway, I mean, we've, we've mixed a lot of dark colors. We have some dark values. So I'm not gonna pay too much attention on the color. I'm paying more attention to the value and I'm just gonna mix dark value, whatever it is, black, green, brown, whatever. If you can do a dark green and it shows up, do a dark green, but I don't think dark green is gonna show up on this. I'm just, that color is just pretty dark in the foreground. I'm taking my two, I'm taking my dark value and just kind of doing just like thin brush strokes going out. My pathway is still a little wet right there. So I noticed that it's wet. I'm not gonna put any more paint in that area. I'm gonna move on to another section. What about this? There we go. Maybe over here. Okay. Now, the biggest thing to remember as you're putting in just these small little details to tighten it up is our brain likes to make patterns. It's really easy to make these grasses evenly spaced the same length. You gotta be aware that your brain is gonna automatically do that. So you gotta say, no brain, I want this grass to not be evenly spaced. 
I want it to be a little bit funky. I want a random piece over here. You know, like, fight that, fight your brain. Do not let it win. Okay. Maybe along my trunk here. A little grass coming out. Boop, boop, boop. And I just feel like I need to help this edge a little bit more. It got a little bit just like muddy and confusing. So I'm just going to kind of tighten that up. Okay, that feels better. That looks great. Okay, how's our tree branch doing? Okay, now it's dry enough that I can start putting in some darker sections. So I'm doing sections and then like I can go off and do like, oh, let's pretend there's a little leaf going off here. And here's a leaf going off this way. You know, like you've guys seen saplings, you know how it just kind of like is little sections. They're not so overwhelming that they create this whole new form. Yeah. They're still a little bit more individual. It's like my facial hair versus my brother's facial hair. <laughs> Just trying to catch up. That's exactly, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm the sapling. <laughs> my beard is the sapling. <laughs> and you can go in with a lighter brown and do thinner branches leading up to these leaves. Now, the, the thing that I've noticed is the hardest thing when you're painting trees is to make them seem realistic. You have to be super aware of the ratio of the thickness of the lines. That is how it, I feel like that is what determines reality a lot of the time. So our, this is a sapling. Our trunk is already so tiny. It's so, so tiny. So when you're going to do the branches and the little twigs at the end of the tree where they're their thinnest and smallest and freshest, you want to be so delicate. You want to really make sure that there's a difference in the thickness of your lines because if your branch up here is the same thickness as this guy right here, automatically our brain is going to be like, no, opinion. Opinion. Like, <laughs> you know, so that if you're struggling with making your tree seem realistic, I, I'm challenging you to really pay attention to the thickness of your trunk and your branches and the outer branches and make sure that there is a difference, okay? Well, depending on the tree, you know what I mean? Like birch trees are like a trunk, you know? So yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. We know a lot about trees here. <laughs> so like I'm doing like barely there, very thin branches out, okay? And they don't have to be solid lines. They can just be dashes, like, cause that's how our eyes work we might not actually be able to see the full branch line, but our brain fills that space in for us because we know that something is actually there. It's like seeing wires on a fence as it go into the distance. Realistically, can we see that itty bitty wire across the field? Probably not. We can see the one standing next to us, but as it goes out, that line thins and eventually disappears. But our brain is just like, I know there's a wire there. I'll fill that in for you. I'll find it. I'll find it. Also, you don't have to put in this sapling if you, like this is your painting, just reminding you that like, I just felt like I really wanted something growing in the foreground, just right there. Now, actually, I think I got this reference photo either from Unsplash or Pixbay, which is where I get a lot of the reference photos here. And in the original reference photo, I wish I can remember, I'm gonna be better about telling you the actual photographer, hmm. but this tree was actually on this side. Oh. But I felt like there was already so much going on over here with this and how much we saw of the mountain that I moved it to the other side compositionally. Um, and that's the cool thing about like being an artist is you can like take pieces and just like move them in other spaces. Yeah. I also think that there's a lot, like you said, the a lot's going on the left side. It's probably my favorite side. 
Yeah. There's a lot of good things going on on that yeah. left side. Yeah. And maybe, and like, I didn't want to cover any of that up either. Yeah. Like, I really like the transition. It's cool. And so I was just like, uh, I'm not really covering anything up over here. Just smoothing out some of this, just with the damp brush. And you can even do a little like grasses on the pathway where it's like, maybe there's a little bit of patch of grass growing out. I mean, you guys have seen, seen dirt, you know, like <laughs> that happens. You, you've seen it. You've seen it. You know it. You know. Yeah. That feels pretty darn good. That looks great. I'm gonna do one thing. I'm looking at this detail line that I have right here on the screen mm. and it feels a little too dark. Mm -hmm. it, do you think so too? Yeah, I always yeah. look at it. Yeah, I, I think it's bringing attention in the way that I don't want it to bring attention. So I'm taking a damp brush and I'm just gonna kind of like work Work it. Work, 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 work. It's not going to erase it completely, but it is going to lighten it and soften it. And then because I worked around that area, it, it moved some of the paint surrounding it that I didn't want to move. So I'm just going to go in and put that paint back. Nice. Ooh, that feels better. That looks great. Wow, that's amazing. Just soften it. Yeah. Now, I will say that when you work an area back and forth a lot on a paper, sometimes you can start to um, peel the paper. That happened a little bit right here. I don't think it happens so much that it's distracting, but I just want to warn you, that's normal. And that happens with watercolor paper, where if you scrub it too much, it will disintegrate. Especially true for, like, wood pulp or... Um, cellulose papers they're a little bit more sensitive than like 100 percent cotton papers but mm -hmm. i've had it happen with 100 percent cotton papers too so it just like be aware of the limitations of the products that you use they're not bad they are who they are but if you know that if you're the type of artist that really works a paper and you scrub and you do layers and you lift and you use so much water you're going to want to use a 100% cotton paper. <laughs> okay. I think that's it. Wow. I know. Love that how it turned out. That blank. Yeah. We just did that. Wow. That's good. Okay. Well, I hope you guys had fun painting this. I hope it gives you a little bit more information on how you would approach um, adding mist into your painting, adding atmosphere, painting depth, those kinds of things. And something is just like yelling out at me and I gotta address it and I'm so sorry. This angle of this mountain, I want, see how it kind of curves to the right? Yeah. I don't like that. I want it to go straight. Oh, okay. Up. So I'm gonna make that happen. It just was yelling at me. Hmm. Just take a dark green, fix that angle. There we go. Crazy. That feels better. And maybe I'll smooth that transition like we did. Smooth that transition a little bit better. Ah, yes. Okay, now I feel better. Thank you for indulging me. All right, so hope you uh, had fun with this, played with this. Um, try new things, take some of these techniques, apply them to your own projects. If you are on Facebook, you can join our watercolor group. That's called Let's Make Art Watercolor. If you are on Instagram, you can tag us at Let's Go Make Art or hashtag Let's Make Art. If you need any of these supplies, you can find them at letsmakeart.com. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.